Hey everyone and welcome back to today's video. Today's video is going to be a recent reads video. So I have decided to do away with my monthly wrap ups because I find that because I had been, and I don't know if this is still going to be the case, but I had been listening to a lot of books on script, it was making the total number of books I read each month um, higher. Yes, that's the word. Um, and therefore it was more books to talk about and I ramble, like, you know, so these videos are becoming extra, extra long. Um, so I'm just going to do recent reads where I can then talk about the books that I've read recently without it having to be every single book in the month and, you know, you just get actual easier reviews. I don't know, reviews that are easy to digest. So I think in this video I'm going to do a mix of books that I have read during the month of December and January, um, just because I didn't do a December wrap up. Did I do a December wrap up? No, I did. I did a December wrap up, but I didn't talk about all the books that I read in December because you girl was tired. So what I'm gonna do now is talk about some of the books that I've read recently and just share my thoughts with you. So I'm going to talk about an Agatha Christie book that I read in December, which is Three at Tragedy. Three at Tragedy is about death. Of course, what is an Agatha Christie novel without death? Although I've been watching the Priory ITV series and sometimes people don't die. And I don't know how I feel about that. Obviously it's good if people don't die, but sometimes you're a bit like, where's the murder? Um, but no, it is about the death of a reverend at a dinner party. Um, all these sort of high society people, one the man who's the host as an actor, have all called round to this actor's house for um, drinks and dinner and this reverend has a drink and he dies um, and you're just really not sure who wanted to kill him and if he was the intended suspect because the way in which the drink was handed there was no way of making sure that that drink was handed exactly to that person it could have been anyone so that happens and then later on there is another dinner party at someone else's and another death happens and I think maybe three deaths end up happening, you're not, you're not really sure. And in this one we do have Poirot, we don't have Hastings, and we have one of the members of the um, party who is helping Poirot like, solve the case, um, and then his friend is also trying to help as well. And basically you go round and round, so many red herrings, you're not really sure who the murderer is murderer is and i really like this one because it was like a bit of a group effort to try and find out who the murderer was and it reminds me of a couple of the other agatha christie novels where by inserting themselves into the process of investigating the crime this person tries to hide themselves between you know being accused of the crime because i think there's about three or four people who then are a bit like yeah we're going to help solve this crime but essentially, yes, it is about death, it is about acting, it is about tragedy. I gave this book three out of five stars. It was enjoyable to read, like, find out who the murderer was. I was like, that's, that's a nice little twist. I guess what sometimes gets me about the Poirot novels is Poirot is privy to information that we, the reader, are not. Therefore, we are not able to guess um, or try and actually correctly deduce who actually murdered this person. So it kind of feels like when you get to the reveal, loads of new information comes out that you the reader have not been privy to so you're just a bit like we were never going to know that i mean it still makes for an interesting tale it still makes for great like unraveling and excitement but sometimes it's just a bit like no sir not even no sir no miss like please stop doing that the next book i'm going to speak about is adults by emma jane unsworth i think this book is now just recently been released. I got this in an advanced reads copy, so I finished reading it at the end of December. Um, and I gave it two out of five stars. This book is about a character named Jenny who is an adult, or well, like supposedly she's an adult. Um, she, like the book opens up with her taking, like basically going to a shop, ordering a croissant, but then it's being like, no, I don't want that one in the front. Like I want the one there because it looks best. And you know, everyone in the shop just being like, um, and then her getting that croissant or she takes a picture of the croissant while she's there something to do with taking a picture of croissant and then the sort of painstakingly um, process painstakingly process she has to do to upload this photo to Instagram with the perfect caption and I thought that was very hilarious to read because like you can imagine so many people that you follow on Instagram do do this like you could just imagine that they go through this process and it's just really funny to read about because it starts off with maybe a caption of like two lines to like one line to three words and eventually one word and you're just like I can totally like tell that some people do this so this is bloody hilarious um and so yeah it rolls on from there and you see like the rest of her life that so she works like in a co-working space for a magazine like some sort of feminist magazine sort of vibe and then you follow her like back home where you find out that she owns her home but she rents it out to like three other people and you get to know about her life her two sort of 
closest friends and then just like the situation with her ex-boyfriend and things like that and then you get to know about like her childhood because then her mum like comes back into her life to live with her a bunch of things happen essentially like these two people that she lives with or three people she lives with, end up moving out her mum ends up moving in and there's a sort of exploration of her childhood and what that was like um, and the issues that she's dealing with as a result of her boyfriend leaving her she's 35 so there's this sort of oh my god it's the end of the world thing that you know this long-term relationship i think she had been in a relationship for like seven or eight years has ended um, and she only seems to have like one good friend in her life who she's absolutely horrific to like i just didn't really understand their friendship in any way shape or form like i understand how they might have been friends at the beginning but as time went on it's time to cut some toxic people Essentially, Jenny is a very self-absorbed no, absorbed person, um, doesn't really care much for the people around her and really much lives for like the internet and Instagram and she's kind of obsessed with following this one person on Instagram. I mean, that's all very well and fine as a story, but I got halfway through and the story was still the same. With something like this and with her mother sort of turning up and living with her and them discussing her childhood, you sort of expect there to be some sort of change in her. And you know, it's fine. Not all of these situations are ever going to make someone change. But as you're reading the story and nothing is happening, it's like, I'm getting like 75% the way through the book and the wittiness and the funniness that was in the first 25% is dragging now. Like it was enough to carry it through to about 45%. But I just remember looking at the book when I was 50% through and thinking, why is this not developing any further? Essentially, there are some sort of pivotal moments, I suppose. There's a point where, you know, she doesn't do something for her friend, Kelly. Well, she sort of half does it. Um, and yeah, she half does it. It's a situation where her friend has asked her to do something really important. She doesn't really do it because of something that she sees on Instagram and you're just like, you're a grown ass woman, like, <laughs> you need to stop. And I, don't, I feel like whilst that's like sort of loosely addressed, I feel like the repercussions wouldn't have been like that for someone in real life. Um, and it just really felt like the story never developed. It felt like everyone pandered to Jenny and there was no real change in Jenny. And there are some other stuff that goes on in this book that I won't mention for fear of ruining it, but I just found that the book was very shallow overall and like I said what started off as funny and witty just wasn't enough to carry the book through like I really kind of resented reading the book towards the end I was like I should just not finish this book but yeah it wasn't a book that I absolutely detested it was just very funny in the beginning but it wasn't enough like I just wasn't really understanding why no one ever said yeah this is all really good and well and really funny but what like what's the point in it um and I know Emma Jane Unsworth is quite a popular writer at the moment so I know she wrote that book Animals that has been doing the rounds and I actually read a book from her many many years ago called Hungry the Stars and Everything and it's one of those books that I look at through my good good reads and I just think I have no idea like what this book is about like I can read the blurb about it and I'm still like I don't remember reading it like I don't remember any of the ins and outs so I really want to go back and read it just because like I rarely feel like that that way about a book I usually remember some bits about it but yes that was that book all right, so the final book that I'm going to speak about is Why We Sleep. I listened to this as an audiobook on Audible. This book, I feel like, is just perfect for me. Most of you won't know this because I don't think I've ever spoken about it on my channel, but I have a plethora of sleep issues, um, and I guess I'm fully obsessed with just trying to get enough sleep or trying to find out why um, I don't get enough sleep. And this book was so helpful. I gave this book four out of five stars because whilst I think I really enjoyed it, I thought all the information was really valuable, there's always this tendency, I think, when you read like non-fiction, especially when you're reading like books on certain scientific subjects, I think there's always going to be a bias, so how accurate it might be in some places, I don't know. Um, but I, I actually really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. There were bits that I did listen to and I was like, oh no, please don't let that be true, just because for my own personal sleeping habits, I didn't want it to be true. But it's a very insightful book. It's talking about why we sleep. Um, how, how beneficial sleep is for us, how it has a knock-on effects on loads of other things. It talks about sleep conditions, it talks about sleep hygiene, it talks about how to improve your sleep. Uh, it talks about, you know, sleep being, you know, one of the leading causes for road accidents, you know, even the fact that the lack of sleep is more dangerous than being a drunk driver. Um, and it's stuff like that that I'm a bit like, is that true? Like, I don't doubt that he's telling the truth or anything like that, but because I don't have that science knowledge it's stuff like that that i think you sometimes have to be very wary about reading but you know people produce facts everywhere so it could be true um 
but just really loads of insightful things about how beneficial sleep is and it's one of those things i know sleep is very beneficial i don't try to like go without sleep um but i think sometimes understanding the science behind things and why it's really important has like really changes your mindset on it and this book just covered so many topics it covers you know sleeping pills and things like that um and i'm much more like enlightened i'm enlightened to sleep more no i always have wanted to sleep more but i think there was just a period during my teenage years where I think as a teenager you generally sleep a lot but where I had terrible insomnia so then it was like I couldn't sleep during the night but during the day I could sleep but obviously I had to go to school and it talks a lot about that the fact that when you are a teenager your sort of um, body clock your circadian rhythm changes so therefore like these early start times that we have for um, teenagers even for like adults who like completely like messes up with your body clock and things like that messes up your body clock and things like that so many insightful things and just like how damaging it is it was incredibly insightful like i recommend that if you are in any way shape or form interested in your i'm gonna say the science of sleep i don't know if anyone has ever watched that film the science of sleep which is completely bonkers which i only ended up watching because one of my favorite films is the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind and it's by the same director but if you're interested in the science of sleep or anything like that i definitely recommend listening to this or reading this um it was just packed with insight i've learned so many things and i have to say when i was reading the book i swear on my life my sleep got worse like the issues with my sleep are related to so many different things like i have sleep apnea but i'm also just generally a very anxious person um and there has been stress or times in my life in the past three months so it's just that ability but it's also hearing a lot of things confirmed about the fact that you know if you are being really stressed and anxious that will have an effect on your sleep but also little things like if you are like that like you shouldn't lie in bed for longer than half an hour awake like just little confirmation of things like that that you're just very much aware of the fact that actually okay that's not a good thing to do i will hop out of bed and do something else but also other things and the fact that the lack of sleep can have on your mental health i think sometimes if you do suffer from mental illness the like the illness is obviously one thing but then obviously the lack of sleep it all sort of feeds into each other and whilst you may know that as a person and sometimes you know doctors are like hey you should sleep more i think the importance of understanding why that is really helps you to then sort of you know separate your emotions but also know why x might be happening as a result of no sleep and i think it was very important there were so many aspects of it and how it was feeding into mental illness that i thought that's that makes a lot of sense like i get that um but yeah overall i found the book really insightful so yes i definitely recommend it if you're someone who is in any way shape or form interested in, in sleep but yeah basically you'll get some sleep like sleep eight hours if you can you know go to bed early all those sorts of things so beneficial like it's one of those books that i've read and i'm just a bit like maybe all my habits aren't really helping me you know some help, habits are healthy some aren't but it was a very insightful book so that is it for today those are the books i'm going to speak about in terms of the books that i have read recently let me know if you've read any of these books or if you have any thoughts and i'll catch you in my next video